It's time to go and see the doctor now today. We're talking about male contraception. It's been almost 60 years since the introduction of oh. the female contraceptive pill, uh, mm. but could we soon have a male alternative? Dr Zoe is, uh, is with us now. Um, so, th these are on trial at yes. the moment. Okay, yes. So, what are we, what, what's being trialled? So, we don't currently have a male contraceptive pill or gel or anything. And the main reason why it's so, so much more difficult is, in the woman, we're just trying to control one thing. We're trying to control one egg each month, whereas in a man, there are millions of sperm that are being produced every day. So, currently, there's a gel on trial. So, this is a gel that can contains two hormones that men can rub into their back and their shoulders and their chest. And the first hormone is a type of progesterone, so the same type of hormone that we see in a lot of the female pills. And that same is to block testosterone production, so it blocks the signal from the brain to the testicles that produce the majority of the testosterone. And that's effectively to reduce the sperm count. So in a normal ejaculate, a man will release five to 15 million sperm in every mil of ejaculate. And if they can reduce that to less than one million per mil, then that effectively that man will not make somebody I mean, pregnant. that sounds like, I mean, it's sort of hormone levels dropping, things changing, testosterone. It sounds like that's not going to come without side effects. Yeah, so the second hormone then is testosterone to replace the uh -huh. testosterone that the man isn't producing. So this is currently being produced. It's a US trial, but they've got centres all around the world. Um, and so far, so good. They've found that in the men that they're training on, about 97% effective, which is all right, but compared to some of the, most of the female contraceptives, which are more than 99% effective, yeah. not great. Some of the other downsides is that if you're a woman and the man's rubbing it onto themselves, then you need to try and avoid getting too much of that gel onto yourself because <laughs> testosterone... Bit... Which is in not easy, not considering ideal. the reason that you're taking it in the first place. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So I think, you know, it's not perfect, it's not ideal, and we're still a long way from it being available. And that's the gel? Is that, so how would the pill work then? OK, so that's the gel. The other thing is the male pill. Now, the female pill's been around, as you said, for for a very long time yeah. and actually for 50 years they've been trying to get the male pill sorted as well but they keep running into problems so it's, on numerous occasions we've been told it's five years away it's 10 years away um, but there are some researchers in Wolverhampton who've found a very clever way of addressing this problem so rather than treating the man and affecting their hormones they're going to affect the sperm directly so they've created a molecule and it is just a molecule at this stage not a drug that doesn't affect the sperm count doesn't kill the sperm but but affects their motility, so effectively paralyzes the sperm. And when you see them doing their trials, they put the sperm into a petri dish, and you can see them all wiggling around trying to do what do their thing. They put the molecule into the petri dish, and they'll just go completely still. So wow. They're still alive, but they can't move. So it's very clever because you're going to eliminate that issue of side effects yeah. from interfering with the hormones. So it, this is exciting. But they're talking um, uh, talking about um, the possibility of a uh, nasal spray or subskin implant, yeah. or something like the jab. Yeah, so we're a long way away from it because they haven't even made it into a drug form yet. So they don't know whether that will be a tablet or not. And once they find whatever drug form it's going to be, they need to test it on humans. And they don't just need to test it for side effects, mm. they need to see if it's effective. So they need to give it at least a year to see what the pregnancy rates are. And then they also need to make sure that it's reversible, reversible so that fertility comes back afterwards. So I would say, realistically, we're 10 years away from that being available. So it's still NHS. vasectomy and, and condoms? Yes, so vasectomy and condoms are the two male contraceptives that we still and have. And obviously, contraceptive, both of you need to be responsible of that. And it doesn't matter who's taking the pill, it's up to both of you to make sure that's being taken consistently. Is there a worry that women are sort of feel like they're handing it over to the guy and whether or not she can sort of rely on that happening? How yeah. dare you? I know, <laughs> I know, but I'm asking the questions from right there. <laughs> I mean, on the one hand, it's unfair, isn't it, that this responsibility always lies with the woman? It's got to lie both, really, hasn't Yeah, on it? the other hand, it's a bit unfair for men because they don't have options. And condoms are a great option, you know, if yeah. you're in an early relationship or you have multiple partners because that is the only contraception that will inf uh, protect you from sexually transmitted infections. Yeah, yeah. But... At the other end of the scale, vasectomy, a great option if you've completed your family, but there's nothing in between. So there was um, some research done last year, well, a questionnaire, and it said that 25% of women wouldn't trust their partner to take the pill every day. And I think if you were to ask the question of men, I think you'd probably get a similar response. So I don't think it's whether it's a man or a woman. Yeah. I think it depends on the individual. Don't and like you say, it should definitely. be a shared responsibility. Yeah, yeah. In, uh, in our final minute, um, it was uh, in the press, uh, you know, this was yesterday, yeah. boys in year eight, 12 to 13, who are going to be given the HPV jab. Yeah. 
I think it's wonderful news. Mm. So the HPV vaccine has been absolutely, completely successful. We've seen significant reduction in the rates of cervical cancer in young women. Um, and with this, it's been said that we could actually cure cervical cancer. We could eliminate wow. cervical cancer in the future. And, and this even is not effective in older, as you get older, older men? It's more effective in younger people before they've been exposed to the vaccine. Um, so, you know, you can still have the vaccine if you're older, you have to pay for it privately, but it's deemed to be less effective. And I think it's important to say HPV, HPV is not a sexually transmitted infection. Nearly all of us will have it and carry it on our skin at some point. Um, but this is really exciting. Mm. And I think, you know, it's one of the best so things currently that happened in a long time. currently it's looking for boys in year eight, so sort of optimum age range between 12 and 13. Yeah, and yeah. it will be with parental consent. Yeah, so I would urge parents to give that consent. Thanks, Thank you very much. Thank you Thank very you. much.